Well, our family's always been in the seafood business in some way or another. We pour our, we pour our heart into this oyster. We put our heart into it. We pour ourselves into it. This is a, a labor intense product in the fact that we daily are on the farm. Right there by the phone, there's a point. It used to be called Myrtle Point, but in 1927, there was an actual murder committed over the oyster lease right there. Two families were claiming the same piece of bottom, and they ended up, a guy walked up on the front porch of another guy and shot him with a shotgun. And from that time off, they named it Murder Point. I tell you that area grows a delicious oyster, and uh, once you have one, you'll see why they're worth killing for. As a shrimper, we have been looking for something else to do to diversify, but we had to find something that matched us. So what we decided, we, we wanted to grow an oyster everybody could eat, you know, and we tried to target that two and a quarter to three inch oyster, perfect little cup half shell, one shot oyster. We have found out that we can actually take this oyster and have a lot to do with its environment and create it to look a certain way. So every time we pull that oyster out and we roll him and we touch him and we send him through the tumbler, he's keeping that muscle constricted and he's keeping that shell closed. That oyster takes on a different taste the more he tries to keep himself closed. You know, as soon as we got into it, we realized that this is something that you can, it's almost an art. What we try to do, we try to put the shells back on the natural bed because uh, what will happen and what we're starting to see even in our inside of our cages, that natural spat will go out and, and, and connect to the oyster shells and begin to grow oysters. So one day we'll have a natural reef right there where we're at. We've made our whole living out of the sea. And I know there's a lot of perception that maybe people are taking advantage of the sea and they're not putting back. But any real commercial fisherman understands you gotta have something for tomorrow. It's a lot to it to create the perfect oyster. It just doesn't happen by itself. If you want to get out there and do everything that it takes, all the little extra things that it takes to create a perfect oyster, it reflects that. And um, you know, people that know food appreciate that.